Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about Yidams, the deities in the Vajrayana tradition. How we should know them. When we talk about Yidams or deities, we are talking about enlightened beings, Buddhas. So that way, according to Buddhist teaching, there are many, many Buddhas. Almost an innumerable Buddhas exist in uh, Pure Land in the Ten Directions. We would say past Buddhas, present Buddhas, future Buddhas will be enlightened. So therefore, there are a lot of Buddhas exist. And if you wanted to know more detail about uh, how those enlightened beings look like, how they are uh, reside in the Pure Land, and if you go to check in the Hinayana teachings, uh, probably you would not find much information about uh, uh, Buddhas, enlightened beings. And their teachings uh, just mention uh, someone achieve enlightened, enlightened means uh, one totally, fully exhausted their suffering, the problems, cause of suffering, the problems, and totally gone into the pranirvana. Now after that, then what happening there is no much uh, uh, give information in the Hinayana teachings. That does not mean Buddhas are disappeared together with their problems and the sufferings cause sufferings. Absolutely not. Buddhas are still exist with their enlightened qualities, with their uh, activities countless activities, endless activities. So that way, in the Mahayana teachings, particularly in the Vajrayana teachings, you would find a lot of information about the Buddhas. So uh, there, therefore, when we talk about the enlightened state of Buddha food, we talk about uh, four kayas. The four kayas like uh, 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 Mm. Uh, Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nimanakaya, and Sobhavikayas. The enlightened beings or Buddha foods manifest in, uh, uh, in the four different forms or four different kayas in order to uh, perform in different activities uh, and different types of sentient beings. So here, the Dharmakaya is the purely absolute truth Kaya, absolute Kaya, which is the real uh, state of enlightening, enlightenment, the, which is the purely aware of uh, self-awareness of wisdom. That is the nothing uh, visible, visible to the other sentient beings. And uh, from that, uh, uh, enlightened Kaya, uh, the Dharma Kaya, manifests uh, two form Kayas. The first Kaya is a Sambhog, Sambhog Kaya, which is uh, uh, manifests mainly in the Pure Lands for the higher uh, achieved Bodhisattva's disciples. And then the second form Kaya called the Nirmana Kaya form, which is manifested uh, uh, in both pure land, it's in pure land, in pure land like mundane, uh, mundane world, for the different types of disciples, uh, uh, including uh, ordinary sentient beings like us, as well as uh, enlightened beings like what Sato was. So, in that case, uh, you would see in the Mahayana tradition there are. Uh, like uh, uh, five um, Buddha and five Buddha families, so on, like, you know, Buddha Amitabha, Buddha Verojana, uh, so on, so on. Those are just the examples. Besides those five Buddhas, there are countless Buddhas exist in the pure land. And then how about uh, Yadams uh, in that case? Yadams uh, only appears in the Vajrayana teachings. Uh, those yadams basically manifestation of a Sambhogakaya form. So that means uh, like a, 
Yedam Chakar Sambara or Kala Chakra are simply manifests in the form of Sambhogaya. That is to say, like you know, that the enlightened beings, someone who achieved the Buddha food, when they means that enlightened and the Buddha food totally beyond to be conceivable. Uh, it is uh, cannot be really, you know, that uh, visible, cannot be conceived by the ordinary sense, ordinary sentient means mind. Uh, at the same time, due to the uh, love and compassionate enlightened uh, beings, they just manifest uh, in a different form for uh, in order to uh, contact or in order to make available to the ordinary sentient beings uh, as well as about subtle words. So therefore, from the truth gaya or, or from the uh, uh, dharma gaya, those enlightened beings manifest in the different forms. So, so that way, yadans, yadans can be explained in that way. So in the form of uh, some uh, Gaya. So uh, I used to hear somebody used to say this uh, Yadam's different forms, different colors, mantras, all these are simply symbolic. Just, just simply symbolic. There's nothing behind or the behind that symbolic uh, things. Just, you know, that's uh, enlightened qualities, just, you know, the symbolically, uh, introduce or express to the ascending beings. And others used to say the Yadams are, are, are powerful beings, uh, those uh, uh, up there looking upon us. And uh, whatever maybe we say, this kind of, uh, you know, that's uh, um, ideas, uh, I'm not going to make any uh, uh, comment with these ideas. I'm trying to say something about Yadams uh, according to the what teaching says. So therefore these uh, Yadams are the enlightened beings and uh, uh, manifestors on, on the form of uh, Sambhogaya. When they manifest and form Sambhogaya, this form different color, different shape, as well as the uh, uh, different songs are not just uh, they manifest as a strange way and a strange thing, the different form, the colors. But each of these, uh, uh, the forms, colors, mantras, symbolically or uh, significant, significantly uh, express the enlightened qualities uh, that which is exist in the enlightened beings, such as uh, uh, the different face and different arms uh, express different qualities of the enlightened and uh, mantras uh, appears and songs and uh, express different uh, qualities enlightened. So therefore, uh, you would say, you can say those Yadams uh, um, outlook, the manifestation is a symbol, just a symbol and significantly express different enlightened qualities. And at the same time, it is not purely just a symbol, purely something, you know, this objects, but the, the, behind this symbol, there is the being called enlightenment, the Buddha. So, uh, in that way, we should understand the, the Yadams, uh, Yadams, so therefore, in the, in the, when we practice the ritual and the yadam, we, there is the way to invocation in the enlightened beings in, in invocation. We make vishi, prayer, and prostration. And often all of them are just related with the enlightened beings. At the same time, when we visualize that uh, the, the form of yadams, uh, we uh, <clears throat> we're trying to understand uh, behind these different uh, colors and forms and shapes, uh, uh, something there is uh, uh, the enlightened qualities uh, uh, manifestors.
So in that way, we be able to slowly understand what is the real meaning of the yadams. Uh, hopefully, you understand a little bit more about the yadams. Uh, otherwise, you know that uh, many people let get confusion about the yadam. So, what those things uh, and then the, how we should do know these things. Uh. So, I'm trying to make a little bit clear, but I don't know how much clear uh, it be. And uh, maybe I will go a little bit more. You know, there's a talk in the next the videos about uh, 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 the different types of the yadams, uh, how we should uh, practice them, how we should relate, make connection. And when we talk about Yadams, according to Tibetan Buddhism, there are four uh, classic, uh, classical, uh, four types of the Yadams, uh, like uh, um, uh, Kriya Tantra, Charya Tantra, uh, Yoga Tantra, and Yoga Tantra. There are four classes of the, the Yadams. So therefore, um, um, each of these Yadam um, has the different way to make it communication uh, through uh, by the practitioners so i would like to talk a little bit about these things in the next videos uh, thank you everyone for being here and to uh, listen this video